Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the second in a series of video seminars on propaganda and counter propaganda. Last week, in my address to you, I focused on the essence of propaganda and counter propaganda the methodology, the content, and the technology involved in propaganda. And I received several comments on my email, my website, and my WhatsApp. Please grant me the indulgence that I will not be able to reply to each and every comment. However, in every subsequent seminars, I will address some of the issues raised by your comments so that everyone would benefit from my reply as opposed to a single reply to an individual via WhatsApp, SMS or email. Now, I stated very clearly in my last address that propaganda, the objective and the purpose of propaganda is to capture your mind, all right? Shackle your mind and focus your mind to a message which the regime or the maker of propaganda wants you to accept and believe as a truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. If the propaganda, which comes from the word propagate, which is a positive word, all right? But the word propagate and propaganda has become a very negative word for the simple reason. Governments, especially oppressive governments, intelligence organization has used the tool of propaganda as a weapon in the mental warfare, the sexual warfare to oppress and to demoralize and shackle your mind, okay? And in fact, many of you will not realize how powerful is propaganda. You can even say that the people who are behind the propaganda strategy of every government throughout the world can be viewed as the real rulers in the sense that there may be prime ministers, presidents, and what have you. But if the president and the prime minister adopts the methodology, the technology, and content of the propaganda created and devised and then inflicted upon your mind, the people behind the curtain, behind the propaganda, may be said to be the real rulers, all right? And the politicians are the mouthpiece of those behind the curtains, all right? Controlling the puppets, the political puppets, and you, the target audience. And let me tell you, if you have time, now because this series of seminars is not meant for the general public, but of course, if the general public would watch my video, and understand 50% of what I'm saying, I'm most happy. Because at least you will now understand, appreciate how to counter propaganda. But my main target audience is for those political activists right now in the forefront, counter-attacking the Najib regime and their propaganda machine. Okay? Because this is a very important warfare. If you cannot capture the minds of the people to turn back on the lies, bullshit, horseshit that's churned out every day over television, radio and newspapers, you will not be able to distinguish between the truth on one hand, lies, propaganda and bullshit on the other hand. Now some of you might say, is, but what the Thai say is true that those people behind the curtain can be construed as the real puppet master. Well, let me explain to you that the father of propaganda, Albert Bernays, 
has this to say. Alright? I would like you to focus on the key words in the two paragraph. Okay? Edward Bernays. Read the first paragraph slowly. Alright? Slowly, word for word. And after I finished, watch it at home. Read it over and over again. Okay? Now let me read to you. Okay? What he said. The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invincible government. Invisible government. Okay, this keyword, sir. Which is the true ruling power of the country. Which is what I said earlier, okay, before I showed you this quotation. We are governed, our minds are molded, our taste formed, our eyes suggested, largely by men we have never heard of. This is the logical result of the way in which our society is organized. There you are. He say there are people behind the scene, invisible. They consider the invisible government. Every day, they are manipulating your mind, giving you suggestions on how to respond to government propaganda. Likewise, as an advertisement, every time when you watch a Korean drama, a Cantonese drama, Hindu movies from Bollywood, or from the US Hollywood movies, you are being assaulted by propaganda and advertisements, repeatedly drumming simple messages to you, tattooed on your mind. That's why your tastes, your ideas are formed by those ideas. No matter how clever you are, you can be a lawyer, doctor, engineers, PhDs, whatever. You don't have an original mind because so long as you watch television, listen to radio, use a handphone, WhatsApp, your mind is controlled to that extent. All right? So in my last seminar, I told you that if you're a victim of propaganda, you're a victim of mental rape. Because why? Your mind is violated, your mind is being controlled. Some people say, Matthias, the word rape is too strong, too dramatic. To those very few people who have watched my first video, the fact that they say they use the word, the use of the word rape is too dramatic, too harsh, means that they have not understood what I say in the first video address. Because if they have really thought about what I say and put themselves in those positions, of those women who have been raped physically and those people who are prisoners of war brainwashed into zombies killers he won't say that alright so I will not apologize or be so frank and direct that propaganda is a financial rape of our minds so the next picture or graphic which I want you to focus on your mind is this. Alright? Look at those words. Focus on those words. And make sure you never ever forget. Alright? The propaganda rapes and violates your minds and your consciousness. The second image which I want you to focus is propaganda destroys democracy, all right? And read the words below it, why we say propaganda destroys democracy. Because if you can't think, you can use the individual mind to think positively and articulate your views, 
then you are like a herd. You have no voice. You are mere sheep, echoing as the collective, the ideas, the message of the government. You are a zombie, all right? Thirdly, this is very important. Propaganda subverts the truth. All right? Okay? Rapes and subvert the truth. Why? It's because government propaganda, especially our present regime, propagate lies every day. And when you receive those lies and accept them as truth, you have been raped intellectually, emotionally, and psychologically. If you don't take this concept that you have been raped mentally, then forever you'll be a prisoner, a mental, psychological, emotional prisoner of the most man behind the curtain manipulating your thought process. You are useless, you are a zombie, you are a ship. you have no mind your own. Now, why do I say lies are so dangerous? It amounts to a rape of your mind. It's because once a lie is embedded in your head and it's entrenched and entrenched and pounded into your head like a tattoo which you can't raise, then no matter what happens, if there are 10,000 people telling you what you believe is wrong, is not the truth, you will not accept the counter message because you have been shackled, imprisoned in that mindset. Now, let me illustrate to you. I'm sure all of you, prior to my first address, with regard to the September 11 attacks and Osama bin Laden, till today, still maintain that Osama bin Laden is a mastermind for the September 11 address, attacked on the Twin Towers in New York, and he's the most wanted terrorist for the attack. And most Muslims throughout the world accept that narrative as gospel truth. Yet, I will show to you, which I had again stated in my last address, that I was the first person in the whole world, I can say that, no? other than the propaganda machinery of the US government, the CIA, MI6, MI5, who knows what, what I say is the truth, but project a lie that Osama bin Laden could not have been, was not and never was the mastermind of the September 11 attack. And I say to you, I could prove it easily. And the years gone by, since 201 attack, I've offered 100,000 US dollars to anyone who can prove to me with concrete evidence Osama bin Laden is the mastermind of the terrorist attack on September 11 on Twin Towers. To today, after 15 years, no one has taken up a challenge and proved me wrong. I've seen the 100,000 US dollar standing as the best. Now, why am I so confident? Because within a week of the attack, I went to the website of the FBI. Okay? This is the website of the FBI. Now, of course, Osama bin Laden is dead, so it's called disease. Alright? But isn't it funny? In the website of the FBI, Osama bin Laden is not wanted for the attack and the murder of the few thousand people of the Twin Towers on September 11, New York. Now, I want you to focus on those words, caution. What has he been accused of, indicted for, as a so-called terrorist? You will notice the word September 11, Twin Towers attack is not even there. Of course, he's been charged and accused of other crimes, but not September 11. Okay? What you do now, Google into the FBI website and see for yourself. 
Now this illustrates to you why I say once a lie has been abandoned in your mind, and this is what happened on the first day of the attack, every television, every radio, throughout the whole world, 24-7, repeated every minute, Osama bin Laden, Osama bin Laden, Al-Qaeda, attack, terrorists, Muslims, and what have you, until you can't think of anything else except Osama bin Laden equals September 11 attack. Even though the FBI says no such thing, and yet, having proven to you with this image, this download from FBI, I'm sure all of you are saying, how can that be? How can that be? President Bush said it's Osama bin Laden. War criminal Blair said it's bin Laden, and so on and so on. But I challenge you, 100,000 US, if you prove me wrong that this website is incorrect, FBI website, I'll pay 100,000. I mean, if I'm right, you pay me 50,000 US. Take the bet. I challenge you, okay? After all, you win, I'll pay 100,000. You lose 50,000. Don't talk so much. Put the money in your mouth if you don't believe what I say. It's the first time I'm saying this live to the Malaysian public. Do not believe in lies, okay? All right. So, it is very important, all right, that we must identify the lies as soon as possible. This is what we call in propaganda warfare, positioning. Positioning. And who should, must control the narrative from the first second, the first minute, the first hour, the first day, the first month, the first year? Once someone has put up a narrative, control the script, control the media, and sell out a message, though it's a lie, and keep on pounding a lie in your head, raping you, shackling you, it's very difficult for you to count that time. That's why you will notice whenever Najib and his regime, the gangster politicians, the scumbags, the criminals, Issue a lie, I count it immediately. No quotes given, no quotes asked. All right? Because that's the only way you shift their narrative, you shift their control away so that you can supplant their position and take over and rebut their lies. Now, yesterday, headlines by our Prime Minister, Sun Newspaper. Alright, these are headlines, alright? Okay, let me read to you the headlines. I never interfered. Nigel says he did not abuse his positions to stop probes into the alleged wrongdoing. This statement was extracted from the defence filed by the Prime Minister, alright, against a suit filed by the former Prime Minister to Dr. Mahathir Mohamad and Dr. Sri Karudin Abu Hassan and former member of the Lankawi Wanita Amno, Adina Saludin or Saludin with regards to 1MDB Look! Look at this headline again, look at this headline again I never interfered Can you see how audacious it is? Is that someone having raped a woman, molested a woman, assaulted a woman, and then say, I didn't touch her. You know, like President Clinton, when she was accused of molesting her inter his intern, Monica, Monica Lewinsky, you know what's on television to the whole world? I don't know that woman. I didn't touch her. But he molested her, abused his position as president, to screw Monica Lewinsky. Even though his sperm specimen was on her dress, he denied it and denied it and denied it until the truth came out. But he had the audacity to deny. He says, that woman, I do not know that woman. Here, again. And I just, I did not interfere in the investigation. Blatant lie in a defense fighting court.
blatant lie. And yet you know, all right, let's take a bet, 100,000 US dollars again. Do you not know, was it, has it not happened? That the former Attorney General was sacked. Officials of Ben Nagara was harassed, interrogated. MACC, the Malaysian Anti-Corruption Commission, was also arrested and interrogated. AG Chambers officials were also interrogated. Members of PAC was removed and promoted into deputy ministers. The whole thing was delayed and new chairmen appointed. And guess what he did? He postponed everything. He subverted the integrity of the PAC report by deleting key sentences in the report in regards to Joe Low as the beneficiary of an account in the BSI Bank in Singapore. I didn't say it. It's in the PAC report. And yet, when the Auditor General or the Auditor General came up with a report and say seven US dollar billion, seven billion US dollars cannot be accounted for, and there must be investigation. Already, there is criminal finding by the Swiss authorities that there were money laundering and corruption with regard to one MDB. Likewise in Singapore, there was interference, there were lies in the probe, in the criminal probe of what MDB. The audacity of the Prime Minister to repeat this lie. I never interfered. You see, why he put that? To plant into your mind the lie that he did not commit any crime. Any interference by other people, but he's a prime minister. The ultimate power in this country. See? Now, for those people who don't read newspapers, who are not educated, they may well believe this lie of the prime minister. What happens? Have not been raped, assaulted, violated, and denied the truth. Instead, let to believe in a lie? This is what I call propaganda. The pernicious influence of propaganda. Likewise, I think two days ago, Najib launched the new Proton Pradana and used the occasion of the launch of the new car saying, no more will Tun Mahathir interfere in Proton management. As if by correlation, the new Proto Padana is a result of his effort. Not just effort because he awarded 1.5 billion ringgit for the continued management and success of Proto. But Proto Padana, the new model, was designed and set in place and produced during Tun Mahathir until he was. He stepped down recently. And yeah, indirectly, Naji to credit. Again, an audacious, audacious usurpation of credit and other lie. You see, they don't tell you. There were many critics, okay, of the Proton Pradana. Every country, when they were developing, chose to have a car industry. America, UK, Germany, France, you name it, Japan, Korea. And all had massive protection. To today, to today, massive protection. You can't find foreign cars in Japan. You can't find foreign cars in Korea. Alright? Or in Germany. Very few. They're simply protected. Okay? What's wrong with that? When Proton first launched, it was the largest producer of cars in Malaysia. Was in control of the car market. But then external forces didn't like it. Alright? But people forgot that 
Proton had four billion cash reserves before it was cannibalized, destroyed by this asshole from a chairman of Proton, put in place by Badawi Patla to destroy Proton. Overnight, within one year, sales of Proton collapsed. The four billion reserve vanished. They sold a subsidiary for one US dollar. I think to BMW. And say that motorcycle company, Agasa, I think, was useless. Yet when the company was sold for one dollar, a few months later, the buyer resold the company. I think for 100 more billion. Can you see how devious it is? They want to destroy the legacy of Tun Mahathir. They want to destroy the achievement of the Malay engineers, technicians, who are in the forefront of that development. A crown jewel of the Bumi Putra community. But those ignorant is assholes within Amno who don't understand about industrialization, the history of the car industry, condemn to Mahathe, condemn Proton. Okay, very simple. Very simple. If what I say is wrong, I challenge Najib and everyone in Amno. If Proton is not a key pillar within the Malaysian economy, close it down. I dare you. I challenge you. You know why? They won't do it because Proton employs a lot of people. And I've spawned an industry that's worth over 18 billion suppliers, distributors, dealers, manufacturers, everyone. And guess what? In Perkan, in Perkan, there's a huge factory, Proton factory, in Perkan. You know why he wants that factory located in Pakistan? Votes! Votes in all elections. Alright? Because he nearly lost them. In one election, he nearly lost by far the votes. He won by far the votes. He was scared shit. So why, if Proton was such a failure, did Najib is Prime Minister? All right, who blames everything on Mahathir, who wants a proto factory in Pekan. Can you see how lies are distorted, subverted to present a narrative, a agenda which is totally false. Totally false. Okay. Now, everyone seems to suggest a safe. Only in the private sector that there is corruption, gangsterism, what have you. Let me tell you, this is another propaganda. Okay? The worst gangsters are actually government gangsters. You know why? No matter how powerful you are, you know, as a gangster, you don't control the army, you don't control the police, the power of arrest, incarceration. So let me tell you, okay, there are two types of criminal enterprise, okay? Look at this image, huh? look at this image, focus on it, criminal enterprises, private and government, okay, right, private, and you call it mafia, longfu tong, Hong Fa Tong in Cantonese, those Chinese gangsters tribes. Alright? Then you have the one MDB type of government enterprise. Okay? The equally dangerous, unlawful, illegal. But more powerful because they have the backing of the government. That is why to today you have seen no one. The criminals it won't end to be arrested or charged or sat. Whereas in the private sector, if you are a gangster, you are caught, you'll be charged, you'll be in prison. But look what MDB. Look at Joe Law. 
a scumbag. He lies and lies and lies. And yet he gets away with it. The government condoned his action and refused to issue a notice to Interpol to arrest him. Why? To perpetuate the lie that they are innocent. And the joke of all jokes in the recent, in the current by election in Sohai Bazaar, guess who they said? Arukanda, this monkey, this clown, to campaign in Sohai Bazaar. Sing about right? how good is one MDB? That everything said about one MDB is a lie. Arukanda, who himself lied by saying that there were over 2 billion in BSI Bank cash. He said that. He saw the bank statements and he's a lawyer, banker. He said he saw bank statements. There's cash. His words not mine. And I challenge anyone, 100,000 US dollar, to say that he didn't say those words. That he saw and he knew from bank statements there was money couple of billions in U.S. Bank. A few days later, the second Minister of Finance and the Prime Minister says, actually there's no cash. Only notes, paper, toilet paper. And when we ask them, what are these notes? Oh, units. And recently in Singapore, government says, BIS, BISI Bank has no money. This two old million, billion, no such things. See? Despite the truth having been brought out, they continue to lie. Because they know there'll be still some people out there in the public who are easily manipulated. Now I hope you will understand how insidious, how dangerous is propaganda. So in this second of the series of seminars, video seminars on propaganda, the key point I want you to take home, think about it, is the word positioning. The essence of what I say today is positioning. The government will always must be the first to get into your mind, drill it in, rape you, violate you, and plant an idea. <coughs> I will repeat it over and over again. So that you'll be tattooed and be very difficult to erase. <clears throat> However, if someone counter-attacks, they wait for a while, a few days, <clears throat> and repeat the lie again, so that they can seize back the original position, seize back the narrative, and control the content. There's a saying, a headline will not last more than 48 hours. But if that headline, that lie, for example, I never interfered, is not rebutted by anyone, then it will get into your mind. See, I never interfered. Meaning what? Some other people interfered. He did. So it's putting the blame on some invisible. Alright? Invisible. Behind the scene. Clowns. He's clowns. Alright? But he's the Prime Minister. Can you see? That's why I said last, in my last address, every counter-attack must be relentless, persistent, determined, and we're still pounding, pounding, pounding until the lie, the damn lies, the bullshit, horseshit is cleansed from the riot's mind. And the real message is put forward to the riot. So, you also remember that I said that there are certain key words you must always maintain when exposing these liars, these criminals. Scumbags, remember? Scumbags, liars, criminal politicians, gangster politicians. And then you must always, in your mind, consciously ask yourself, why are they positioning all these issues every day is because they want to promote lies. 
So always contrast. Lies on one hand by the Nazi regime, truth by the Raya. Okay? Greed cash is king as opposed to serving the people, selfless devotion to the Raya. Policies which are anti the working people at like GSTs. All right? Inflation, high taxes, as against proactive policies that support the people. Okay? And finally, let's have no illusion. AMNO and the scumbag leaders, all right, has hijacked the train. And the train has left the station, the gravy train. We're leaving you all of us behind. But in the haste to hijack the train with all the loot in the train and run away, leaving us behind for them to enjoy the ill gotten gains, they forgot there's no driver on the train. So, right now, AMNO is a train going full speed without a driver. So, if you hop, jump onto that train right now and continue to support AMNO, you are committing suicide. Okay? Let them hijack that train. That train is like outdated, useless, inferior. And may they crash and crash quickly. Good readers to bad rubbish. We will build a new train. A smart train. A brute speed train. A fast train. And we will leave no one behind. Everyone will go on board this train and going to have a fantastic journey, a successful journey to reclaim back Malaysia, reset Malaysia, overhaul Malaysia, and get rid of all these scumbags, these daylight robbers, financial rapists, gangsters. Okay? And we'll build a new government based on competency, honesty, trust and courage and that our moral fiber is very simple we will be guided by god almighty that's why i always say surrender your will to god almighty have absolute faith that he will defend you protect you and guide you under all circumstances in the face of all enemies and adversities Believe you me, we will prevail and we will win if we do not allow ourselves to be manipulated, molded, mentally, psychologically, emotionally raped by these spin doctors, okay, propaganda, con artists in the PM's office. Alright? With that, once again, I thank you for listening to this second in a series of seminars on propaganda and counter-propaganda. And I hope you will spread this video as far and wide as possible. Because now, there is a by-election going on, right? But more importantly, prepare yourself for the ultimate battle, the general election, if there's one. Even if there's not a general election, you must be equipped mentally, psychologically, to fight in this relentless war waged upon us by a crooked criminal government. Thank you. Have a nice day.